Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. You can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. Contact us and let us know what you are learning so far. Today we are on day one of this week's Daily Torah series called Vayikra, which means, and he called. Yesterday we finished our series on Teku Day with a special reading from Psalm 68. Today our Torah portion opens as God instructs Moses about how to perform the various burnt sacrifices offered in the tabernacle. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or listen and review later. But let's pick up the story in Leviticus chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. In Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1, we read, Now the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle of meeting, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the livestock, of the herd, and of the flock. If his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own free will at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. And in verse 8, Then the priests, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts of the head and the fat in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. But he shall wash its entrails and its legs with water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. So my friends, this is the first of three animals that could be offered up to the Lord for a burnt offering, And I always like to say that this is proof that steak is God's favorite food, for it is a sweet aroma to him. I mean, who doesn't like the smell of meat on a barbecue? But seriously, Leviticus begins with God calling Moses from the tent of meeting. The book emphasizes the distinction between the Mosaic law and the sacrificial system. While the law encompasses various commandments, The sacrificial system focuses on atonement through offerings. The worshiper would lay hands on the head of the sacrificial animal, symbolizing identification and transfer of sin. In ancient Israel, every person played a priestly role during the offering process. The burnt offering system traces back to Abraham's willingness to offer his son Isaac as a burnt offering in in Genesis 22. Isaac's near sacrifice foreshadowed the ultimate sacrifice of Yeshua. Leviticus 1 uh, verse 9 instructs washing the internal organs and legs of the burnt offering. Symbolically, this represents internal purity of Messiah's heart and external holiness righteous life. Holiness is a reoccurring theme. The washing of inwards and legs signifies cleansing from lusts and harmful behaviors. Remember that these offerings foreshadowed the ultimate sacrifice of Yeshua who transformed the sacrificial system. As we explore Leviticus, we gain deeper insights into God's redemptive plan and the significance of Yeshua's sacrifice. Now, continuing in verse 10, we read, If his offering is of the flocks, of the sheep, or of the goats as a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring a male without blemish. And then in verse 14, And if the burnt sacrifice of his offering to the Lord is of birds, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or young pigeons. So my friends, we see that depending on your economic status, you could bring a bull, a sheep or a goat, or the poor person's sacrifice of a turtle dove or a pigeon. This is not to say that if you had a bull, 
You could just offer a pigeon and expect your sins to be forgiven. The burnt offering symbolized total surrender and consecration to God. It was entirely consumed by fire on the altar. Yeshua, as the perfect sacrifice, offered himself completely to God. His life, death, and resurrection exemplify this total surrender for our redemption. Likewise, we as believers should offer ourselves in total surrender to God and as living sacrifices, He deserves our best. Anything less is unacceptable. Now let's turn to our half Torah portion for today in Isaiah chapter 43. Verses 21 through 25. In Isaiah 43, beginning in verse 21, we read, This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have brought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake, and I will not remember your sins. My friends, God has formed and transformed his people for his glory. Through the Messiah, they will declare his praise and fulfill their purpose. And despite Israel's shortcomings in worship, God's grace shines through. He forgives their sins, not because of their offerings or righteousness, but for his own sake. His unmerited grace is a jewel in his crown. And we see this grace in the Old Testament, all throughout the Old Testament, just not in the New Testament. The Lord, the lawgiver, forgives sins, something only he can do. It's not based on human efforts or merits. His forgiveness flows from his grace, covenant, and the blood of Messiah. And despite our failings, he chooses to forget our sins. Now we will continue to explore this theme of the heart of God's redemptive plan through the Messiah. His forgiveness is both surprising and glorious, emphasizing his unchanging love for his people. But let's explore our Brit Hadashah portion for today in Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 1. Paul exemplifies this theme in Hebrews 10 verse 1 we read, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers once purified would have had no consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Now, my friends, many pastors today teach that the law is done away with, nailed to the cross. But that is not what Paul is saying here. The sacrificial system was added after the sin of the golden calf. And as such, Yeshua's sacrifice culminates in the ultimate forgiveness of our sins once and for all. But in, now, uh, but in no way negates the Ten Commandments and the rest of the ordinances given by God to us. You can't throw the baby out with the bath water, as the old saying goes. Now, continuing in verse 5. Therefore, when he, Yeshua, came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book 
it is written of me to do your will, O God. In verse 8, previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Yeshua, the Messiah, once for all. My friends, the sacrifices offered by the high priests under the old covenant could not truly cleanse the conscience or provide lasting forgiveness. These sacrifices were repeated continually but could not take away sins. Yeshua, as the ultimate high priest, offered one sacrifice for sins forever. His sacrifice was effective, unlike the repeated animal sacrifices. And the Holy Spirit bears witness to the new covenant. God promises to write his laws on the hearts and minds of believers, and he will remember our sins no more. Obedience to Yeshua and the new covenant is crucial. And Yeshua actually elevates the commandments of God to a spiritual level where we can sin through our thoughts and lustful desires as he illustrates in Matthew 5 during the Sermon on the Mount. On the Mount. My friends, once we have accepted Yeshua's sacrifice, have repented, been baptized, and have had hands laid on us, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But that gift is not a license to continue sinning. When we do sin, we confess our sins and we give a sacrifice of, con of confession and we repent and we try to go forward and sin no more. Just as Yeshua said, he, re he forgives our sin and he says, go and sin no more. Grace is not a license to sin. The Torah defines what sin is. So anyone who says that the Torah and the Old Testament have been done away with is speaking the devil's lies and is living in sin. For as 1 John chapter 3 says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. And in verse 7 of First John 3, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. My friends, I know sometimes these scriptures are difficult to understand. So throughout this week, we will continue to explore this topic of sin in the sacrificial system. Throughout this week's Torah portion, you won't want to miss a single episode this week. So let's end it here for today. Take some time to meditate on these words and how they apply to your life. Pray for us in this message to go out and pray for those who are scattered throughout the world seeking their Messiah so that they will return to the Torah in their Hebraic roots. Share this message with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages and help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. Remember to visit us at mymdi.org. Take one of our free classes. Download the daily Torah schedule. You can also order the daily Torah series of books to follow along. And if the Lord inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so we can reach more people with these messages. Just click the giving menu option or the donate button on the website. So tomorrow we will continue our studies. Until then, Shalom Aleichem, blessings and Shalom, my friends.